Hello everybody and welcome to the third game development with Python 3 and Pygame. In this video what we're going to be doing is building on the last stuff and today what I want to do is get us to be able to control our car because what we're going to have this game do is we're going to basically make it a little bit of an avoidance game. We're going to be avoiding objects on the quote unquote roadway and to do that we need to be able to swerve left or right. So we want to be able to control our little race car that we've loaded to screen. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to handle some logic here. So like I was saying before, this is your event handling loop. And then you might have a little bit of a logic loop. Um, but for now, in our event handling loop, that's going to handle all of our movement based on user input. So um, if event type equals pygame.quit, crashed equals true, everybody, everybody's you know good. Um, and if crashed equals true, it just ends and then it goes pygame.quit. Quit, okay? Eventually we'll change that, but we're going to have like a whole kind of game over thing and stuff too, so we'll worry about that in a little bit. So we'll come down here, and um, it's asking basically the first thing we ask is if it's a quit, then we quit. Otherwise, uh, we can also ask if event.type equals pygame.quit, and then in all caps, key down. Now what this is going to ask is if there was a, a a key press at all. Like a key down just means did someone push a key down? That's it. If there was a a, um, a key down, then we're going to say if event dot key equals pygame dot on all caps again k underscore left, and that's going to respond to our left arrow key. So if the event key is the left arrow key then we want to change um, the location of our car. Now we don't have a variable for the location, like to change the location of the car. So here we're going to say, um, just under x and y, we can say uh, x underscore change equals zero for now. Um, and then we can come down here back into our while loop. And then if pygame, or if, if it's a, a, a left arrow, then we want to move x left, right, left, right. <laughs> I crack myself up. <laughs> so uh, if we want to move left, um, then we want to decrease the value of our x location, right? So so x is you know on a plane, and to move x, well at least for you guys, I think it would be this way. Yeah. To move x this way, we have to subtract from the x uh, value. So we'll say x underscore change equals negative five. We're going to move it five. Um, and then we're going to have elif event dot key equals pi, oops, pi game dot k underscore right. So if it's a right key press, then we want to actually move it. We want to move it right. And to do that, we would add to x. So we'll say x underscore change equals five. So we want to move it by five. And then um, the other question that we might have is not only do we have key down, but we want to have some sort of handling to where because if we hold the key down, it'll move it'll move x. But then if we raise our key, x change is still going to be minus five or, or, or five. So we want to be able to like just hold it. We don't want to have to keep pressing it to make our, our character move. But we also want something to happen when we release it. So we need to handle that as well. So over here, we're going to say if event.type equals pygame dot, in all caps, key up. So if the key has been released and it moves up, what do we want to do? And let's make some space here. If that is the case, then what we want to do is if um, event.key equals pygame dot k underscore left or event dot key equals pygame dot k underscore right. So if the key that's being released here is either the left or right arrow, then we want to say x underscore change equals zero. We want to make that you know zero so it doesn't change anymore. And because otherwise, you know, we could have other functions like, you know, you could press spacebar or something or P for pause. 
and stuff like that. So, you know, there might be other things. For now, it'll be the only keys that we're going to have in this game are left and right anyways. But uh, just, just to keep things simple, we'll do it this way. And now um, we want to exit everything. So this is our... We're, we're done with event handling in, in, um, in our Pi game. And now we want to change variables based on the events that have occurred. So we know how much we want to change it by. What variable do we want to change? Well, we want to change X, which is the location right, of our car, because every, every frame we redraw the location of our car. So now we want to change the value of X. So we're going to say X plus, oops, plus equals X underscore change. So when it's minus five, it's going to be plus equals minus five, which means we'll subtract. Or if it's five, it'll be plus equals five, which means it will add five to the value of x. Or if it's zero, it will just plus equals zero, which will do nothing. And that's it. So now we're ready to go ahead and save this, and we can run it, and up pops our car. Cool. And we can press arrows. Good. It moves. Moves left, right. Wow, so much agility. Now the only thing that's kind of problematic with a uh, Pi game is if sometimes you can get like stuck like here and I'm actually pressing my left arrow key but for whatever reason it is uh, it got stuck like you can kind of play around a little bit but you'll get stuck sometimes so that adds a little bit of frustration to the game you almost have to fully lift up your key and then press over your key um, And um, one, a couple of things that you, you could try to play with these options here. Uh, so for example, uh, we could do something like this. You can remove all your elif statements. So we could save and run it again. And now, you know, in theory, it should still run that statement, but for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to want to run my, the, the other key press that's happened. So in theory, if you were to press both keys at the same time, you should get a reaction like you were pressing both at the same time, but for some reason it just doesn't work that way. Um, or maybe you're just not pressing at the same time. I don't know. But anyway, that's the only thing that can get kind of frustrating, so you almost have to like double press a key sometimes. But um, you could tinker uh, a little bit with those to see if you could uh, figure out a fix. Uh, let's see if we can move clock tick down as well. See if we can get that to go away maybe. Yeah, so it still remains no matter uh, what, what it is. But as you can see, that's now I guess would be a good time to talk about frames per second. So since our move uh, is, uh, well, I guess it's five here. We see that it, you know, it changes by five. Um, we could make that larger number and make the car move quote unquote faster, or we could just increase the amount of frames per second, and that also makes the car move slightly faster. So, uh, and also just for the record, the car probably looks a little glitchy um, through my video, uh, I think I normally record on like five or ten frames per second for the screen, so um, yours should look a lot more smooth than mine is anyway. If you're following along, so that's moving the car on the screen. Um, pretty basic, uh, but we've got other things that we want to add. Eventually, we're going to add some more objects, stuff like that. Also, we have no boundary on the car, so for example, if we run this, we can take our car and we can just move him off the screen. Like now, he's on this monitor. And we can bring him back. It'll come back eventually. There it is. Um, but this is obviously no good. We want to have some sort of boundary to the game, so we can't run into the walls like this. And if we do, we crashed or something. So we're going to work on that as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments on this video, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.